This is lab 23 on the dog specimen. So we're on the head again and we're working more on the larynx and a bunch of muscles basically. So here we have the right side and this is the midline. Here would be the left side. So if you can do it on the left side that would be great, but sometimes it doesn't get split evenly like mine didn't. So here on the right side I actually have most of my larynx on this side, so I have to use this side for the larynx. And that's where we'll start today. So the larynx is here, and if you do have it intact like this and you can't see inside the larynx, I recommend making a dorsal incision along the top there and just open it up so you'll be able to actually see inside the larynx and be able to identify all the structures. Okay, so we'll start with the cartilages. We have the epiglottic cartilage here, so that's making up the epiglottis. And then you have the arretinoid cartilages. So if I open this up, I've tried to isolate one of them here, and to me it looks like a butterfly. It has two wings to it here, so here's one wing, and here's the other wing and that's an arretinoid cartilage. So you have two of those. So you have one here and you also have one on the other side here. I haven't taken the mucosa off of this one so you can't see that entirely, but that would be a retinoid there and a retinoid there. So you have two of those. Then we have thyroid cartilage. So thyroid cartilage is here and that makes a U shape. So you'll see it on the bottom and then you'll also have to pull it out and cut the mucosa of the wall and here you can see thyroid cartilage here as well. And that's in the wall. You can palpate it and then cut open the mucosa to see the rest of that. So that's kind of a U shape that cups around the larynx. Then we have the cricoid. So I say the cricoid is like a ring. So it has a broad top. So this is cricoid here and here. And then on the bottom it's just a small piece. We actually don't have a cut section of it here because it's all intact. But if you think of a ring that you wear on your finger, the band on the bottom is small and it's broader on the top where you wear the top of the ring. So that's what cricoid kind of looks like. And then we'll move back to a couple of finer points in the larynx. So the epiglottic cartilage is attached to the retinoid cartilage. So here you can see that fold right here that's attaching this epiglottic cartilage and this retinoid cartilage. And that's called the epiglottic fold. So just a few fold of mu mucosa that goes between those two. All right, then on the thyroid cartilage, so that was the U-shaped one that goes around here. If I pull out the mucosa here, you have a rostral cornu and a caudal cornu. So it's just these points toward the nose here, rostral, and then caudal would be caudal towards back. And so those are just points where um, articulation points on the thyroid cartilage. We also have the caudal thyroid incisure. So when you flip it upside down here, so we're looking at a ventral view now, this is the thyroid cartilage here. This little notch right here would be the caudal thyroid incisure. And that's where your cricothyroid ligament is attaching, so this white piece you see here. And if it's cut right in the middle, you may not see a lot of that ligament, but it's attaching the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. So here's the bottom of that ring of cricoid, and the ligament attaches those. So cricothyroid ligament there. Okay, on the arretinoid, we have what's called the vocal process. So here's one wing of the arretinoid. Here's another wing. This little piece here that you see attaching to what's called the vocal fold is going to be the vocal process. So vocal process will be here, and then on this side it's covered with mucosa, but would be right here in this area, attaching to what is called the vocal fold. So this right here would be vocal fold, and that covers over the laryngeal ventricle. So that's where the probe is now, is in the laryngeal ventricle. And on this side I've cut open the vocal fold, and here you can see the vocalis muscle. So that's that striated muscle right here is vocalis muscle, and you have a little um, vocal ligament here on that cranial edge, just right here. I'll try and elevate it. It's a little hard to see sometimes, but right here on the very cranial edge would be a vocal ligament. So those are inside the vocal fold attaching to the vocal process. And then your glottis is a little bit 
of a difficult concept. But you have, so vocal process on one side and vocal process on the other side, plus the vocal fold attaching on both sides. And then this little passageway in between is called the rim of glottidis. And all of those structures make up the glottis. Okay. Then we will move on and we will do some of the muscles. So here on the larynx, if you again go to a ventral view and just tip it up like this, you will have the cricothyroid muscle. So I say it makes a little bow tie almost on the bottom here. So cricothyroid muscle. Then if you go to a dorsal view and pull it out of the mucosa, so you have to reflect all of this right here. So I'll reflect all that mucosa and you're looking for, if I can get my finger, I'll pull it out a little more. So we have cricoretinoideus dorsalis. So cricoretinoideus dorsalis is the most dorsal one here. And then if I pull this out, right where the probe is right there is cricoretinoideus lateralis. So that's going on the lateral side. So right there is cricoretinoideus lateralis. Okay, and then we have thyroretinoideus, which is this one stretching kind of rostrally right here. So thyroretinoideus, and then that thyroretinoideus is actually the one that has the edge of it is going to be that vocalis muscle that we saw in here. So that's actually coming from that thyroretinoideus muscle. Okay, then we'll move on to the other side of the head and work on the ear. So here you have the oracle, or you can call it the pinna. And we're basically just cutting into that external ear canal, just making two parallel incisions down the side so that you can open that up. So the pinna is made up of auricular cartilage and that extends all the way down to this point right here where you kind of see you have auricular cartilage funneling down here and then inside of that you have another funnel and so that's going to actually be the start of your annular cartilage of the ear right there. So annular cartilage versus auricular cartilage. And then the other thing on the ear is the marginal cutaneous sac. So just this little sac right here on the caudal edge of the ear. Then we have some muscles to identify. So here on that left side, this you do want to try and do on the left side. You will have cut your auricular muscles and reflected those down towards the ear. So here you have the temporalis muscle, which is a really large muscle right here. And you have your masseter muscle here. And then kind of in between those two, you'll have the zygomatic arch. So on today's lab, you're going to need to cut out the zygomatic arch. And you're using a bone saw that will be available in lab. And you're making a cut as far rostrally as possible here and as far caudally as possible here. And actually just peeling away that piece and taking it out. So you can just take that part out. And then you're going to peel back your temporalis muscle, which is a pretty big job actually, and use a scalpel handle and just kind of, you start with the scalpel blade, make a cut like that, and then use the handle and just peel it away. And you're going to peel it all the way back. The book says to remove it, but if you can leave it attached, I just leave it attached caudally. And so you have to dig way down in there, and you do want to be careful, unless you want to repeat this on the other side of the head later, you want to preserve these vessels and nerves that you see kind of down in that hole there, so that you won't have to redo this dissection on the other side. So try and be careful of those. But the reason we're taking out the temporalis muscle and trying to show you this area is to see if you can see this shininess where the probe is lying right here. That is actually part of the pterygoid muscle. So that would be medial pterygoid, and lateral pterygoid would be right next to it, but you don't differentiate the two. You just need to see where the pterygoid muscles would be in that area. So we're looking for medial and lateral, lateral pterygoid muscles in there. And then if you flip it over, here, we'll go, so we're right side up here. And if you go into the oropharynx, just in front of that palatine tonsil, you can make an incision up the palate. And so then, if you reflect all of this off of the palate, you'll actually get a view of that pterygoid muscle here. So this would be medial pterygoid muscle right here. So that's another way to see that muscle. Okay, then we'll flip back to the lateral side. And now you're looking for the digastricus muscle. 
And so, if you kind of go from a ventral view, lift up and move all of the fascia, you can cut through the vein on this side if you need to. And then you're looking for this muscle right here. So this muscle is digastricus muscle. And then you're going to actually just cut that, just kind of in the middle, and reflect both parts. And that will help you see some muscles here in just a second. So then we also have down here, this is actually mylohyoideus muscle. It's just kind of a thin sling that goes across. But you may want to uh, reflect that up before you look for the next muscle on our list here. So usually I just kind of reflect that off like that before moving on to the styloglossus. So the styloglossus muscle will be underneath digastricus and kind of underneath this mylohyoideus. And it's a sling that kind of swoops down and around here. So it's that curving piece of muscle you see. So that's styloglossus muscle. And then we have a hyoglossus muscle. So hyo meaning the hyoid apparatus, which is right here. And so you're going from hyoid apparatus to the tongue. So it's going to be actually this muscle, here I'll put the forceps around the whole thing, would be right here. It had a vein going right through the middle of it, so it kind of split it apart. But this would be the hyoglossus muscle. Okay, then we also have a genioglossus muscle. And on this one, we'll look at the other side too for some of these, because genioglossus goes from the chin, genio means chin, up to the tongue. So genioglossus would be here, but on the other side, it's much more prominent. So here would be genial glossus, all of this going up to the tongue. So a much better view on this side for genial glossus muscle. Okay, then we also have the sternohyoideus and sternothyroideus muscles, which maybe you remember those from way back. And so here would be that sternohyoideus uh, right here. And then this one, then, here, I'll lay it down a little bit. So sternohyoideus going to the hyoid bone, sternothyroideus going to the thyroid cartilage. And then as you find sternothyroideus, if you just take a step forward, you're going to find the thyrohyoideus. So going between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. So right here is this little muscle, thyrohyoideus. Okay, then we already looked at mylohyoideus. I'll point that out one more time. So this one right here was mylohyoideus. Then we also have geniohyoideus. So again, genio means chin, which we only have a little slip of it here. So from chin to the hyoid would be geniohyoideus. And I'll just point it on on the other side here since most of it is here. So geniohyoideus, right there from chin to the hyoid bone. And then I just want to go back and do one thing I didn't mention while we were on the lateral side underneath your zygomatic arch after you've reflected your temporalis muscle. So down here in the hole, you're looking for this zygomatic salivary gland. So it's going to be this tissue right here. It's kind of tan and lobulated looking. But that's the zygomatic salivary gland, so deep underneath where you took out your zygomatic arch. And that should be it for lab 23.